connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. That they, that they may, grow may grow in Christ, in Christ as, well as, myself, as well as myself for the purpose, for the purpose of, of successful, successful living. living. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you in. We're here at the Mother Campus, uh, 210 Pansy Road, Hodges, South Carolina, and all of those that are joining from the Greenville Campus, we're happy to have you, and of course, the virtual campus and to our global connections all around the world. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and all those that support the mothers, which you include all of the nieces and the aunts. Um, anything that is a woman, we celebrate you. You don't have to birth a child to be a mother, and many mothers who have birthed children are not mothers, so we have to give you your support for um, encouraging the uh, young males, also encouraging your nieces and your nephews, and being a staple mate for them. So we salute you all because we cannot be functional or consistent without you. The other part of that is that the mothers and women are so important to humanity's ecosystem. We need you. We need you. We need your voice. We need your love. We need all that you do. You are a great part of the ecosystem that has made humanity what it is. I say this and I say this with compassion. We still today, as well as 1861, still have two thirds of the women in the world who cannot functionally read. So we need women to help women and as men, we need to support women and we need to do it. It's not a fad, it's a reality. And we need to respect them. It doesn't matter whether she respects herself or not. As a man and as a husband and as a gentleman, we need to carry ourselves in respect. Right, women have done so much uh, for men, and I see women, men still on the passenger side today. I'm old school. I mean, I, my, my daughters should not be riding with a man that don't have a car and definitely don't come to my house. I see women cutting grass and a man playing a video game. I see women pumping gas and a man sitting in the car, or a boy sitting in the car playing a video game. I don't, I'm not upset because you're upset. I'm disappointed because you're, you're a disgrace to a man. And if you don't know what a man should be and what a husband should be, we'll have a conversation. Because somehow, because of the absence of men, women have done a tremendous job. But a man needs to be in a young boy's life. Because we have where mothers have carried and took care of. So then a young man now thinks a woman's supposed to take care of him. Yes. Yes. He doesn't know how to be a provider. And so many young girls have seen their mothers and their grandmothers and people uh, take care of a man that they think that's what they're supposed to do. Well, if you're taking care of him, who's going to take care of you? And then y'all write all these love songs. I can't even listen to R&B for somebody crying about how somebody wasn't a man and their mama didn't raise them. I'm like, you should have left his butt alone. Hmm? Yeah, you can't raise a man. Hmm. And I'll tell men, you, can't, you can do your best job with a little girl. I have two wonderful daughters. And there were times that they went through certain things in their life that they needed their mother because I can't tell them how to handle that. Mothers build confidence and show love and fathers build environments. And I don't care what y'all do, that ain't going to change. Hmm? Yeah, it's, it's because, because of weak men, women had to stand up and do something. 
I, I, I talked with some folks last night, and they talking about, I don't want no weak man. I didn't have that. I said, okay, Jesus. Because I'm actually going to do an event, uh, and I'm shooting for the first Saturday in November. And I need men. I need men that are 40 and over because I'm going to do an event because I have so many women signed up for the event. So I will share that with you all. And once I get the flyers and everything ready, and my good friend, um, Pastor Deborah Garrison and Pastor Joe Garrison, they're going to help me pull on this event. So I'm looking for the first weekend, and I'm going to do a singles event. And we're going to have, we, we, we don't want no married folk there. We don't want you telling them about your problems. Let everybody develop their own. And I'm going to do a singles event uh, where they can mingle. And I'm going to bring in some gospel comedy, bring in maybe a little jazz. I know that ain't going to go over well with the church folk, but they dance too. They say they don't. Now you hear old Sanctified over here. He'll be the first one at the house popping his fingers. All you got to do is just ask his folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm going to do something and have a wonderful fellowship. And so I've talked to some of you about it, but we're going to do it. And um, I look forward to it because I get people coming to me all the time saying, you know, and, and here's the whole point. You know, people can say what they want to say. You're still human. Everybody needs companion. People love pets, but people don't love people. Everybody needs companion. Everybody needs companionship. Am I right? Y'all single people ought to speak up. Y'all need, I mean, if you don't need it, then just save me. I can save my money. I can go get me some gin and juice, some Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I know somebody going to post that. I'm going to take this to his mama. He said gin and juice. Ooh, if you knew the things that my mama knew about her son, Lord have mercy. She told me something the other day. I was embarrassed. Somebody had was trying to question what I do for a living, and I told them I trained monkeys in the forest. <laughs> I didn't know my mother was standing that close that she could hear what I say. <laughs> I told them I, I'm a National Geographic. I train monkeys. You know, I train goats. I wrestle goats, and I train goats. And I told the man who walked up in my yard, he, you know, he's trying to figure out how you got where you are. I said, I'm a monkey trainer. I train monkeys in the forest. So I'm doing something for single people. Now, young people, I got something coming. I don't remember them all. I think it's Xennials. Uh, no, 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 Gen Z's. It's, it's a couple groups before then that we have left out. I don't have my sheet in front of me, but I'm going to do something for y'all. Hmm? Gen Y? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have something for you all, but I got to take care of the 40 and up first, and then I'm coming to you guys. Yeah, because y'all not going to be able to do that, what y'all going to do with church folks. I'm going to do that somewhere else. <laughs> all the stuff y'all going to look at. I've done my year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Y'all ready for a quick lesson? All right. We talked about at the uh, satellite campus, and again, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Uh, we began talking last Wednesday about don't wreck your future. Now, the reason this comes uh, so significant, and you will hear me do a little bit of old school here, is that in Galatians 5 and 1, I want you, and this is the month of grace, I want you to start thinking about your freedom and your peace. Now, I'm going to say this because in, in having conversations with those that are from uh, the motherland, they said that many people who are in the motherland are walking around with a burden that was never extended to them. You wake up every day and try to represent your color. You need to wake up every day and represent your purpose. Your purpose is beyond your color or your ethnicity or where you live. And so what you have to realize when, when the writer here, Paul, is writing to the Galatian saints, and we understand the hermeneutics and the hermeneutics of it in the context and the narrative. If you go to the second, chat, second verse, it talks about circumcision and uncircumcised. And so the Jews had a problem with the Gentiles who were coming in, and they were saying they had eight, nine, and ten wives, 
and yet they were uncircumcised. And in one pretense in the New Testament, well, actually in the Old Testament, it talked about circumcision rec represented cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness. What is the proper word? Yeah, that's too, that word too big for me. Hmm? Yeah, blessed. Uh, so, so that was a part of saying that you were clean. But because of Jesus Christ, now we should be clean from the inside. And too many people focus on their outside and never discover who they are because they're trying to represent a culture that don't represent them. When God created you, he created you for a purpose and a destiny. So when he's writing here, if we're going to bring this into the 21st century, it says stand fast in the liberty where with Christ. Every person needs the anointing of God over his and her life has set you free you are bound by mistakes and being labeled by other people you are bound by your shape your size the texture of your hair or what you do or do not have that's not how God sees you it says be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage this is why the topic today is running from your past. Many people do not want to close the door on their past, past mistakes, past failures, past brokenness, all these things. Here is the thing. I want you to write this to those who are writing. Bruised but not broken. You have been bruised but you're not broken. If you're able to breathe and think and speak, you still have a chance. The problem is you've given up on your future. So when we look at this, I, want, I added this piece to it and I want you to write this because I can't give you this. You're important to God and your future. You've tried to be important to people. And you've tried to be important to things. You have to realize you're important to God and your future. And you have a responsibility to build your future. Now, you can get with the group who always talk about what you don't have and what people won't let you have and scare. Those are people who are hindrance. They want to hinder you in the presence because they don't have any faith in themselves. To get stuff doesn't mean you have faith. Is this making sense? So what we have to do is we have to understand it's up to you to break generational trauma. There are some things in your life that needs to die in your generation. I don't know why people have been told that because of your ethnicity that you're supposed to be poor, dumb, and ignorant. I don't know how you were told to build the White House, but you can't live in the White House. The problem is they don't have to tell you anything anymore because you believe your own nightmare. Real quick, stop allowing people to use your failure as a talking point to make themselves look relevant. Stop allowing people. Everybody has made a mistake. And the reason they're talking about your mistakes is because they're trying to hide theirs. I want you, especially if you are a certain ethnicity and you all can figure who that is, I don't ever want to see your head hanging down. You look everybody in the face. You are no less than anybody. 
And the reason people don't want you to look them in the face because they're scared of you. And they ain't scared of you because you're physically this. They're scared of you because of what's in you. I don't believe in raising boys. I believe in raising men. You look them in the face. But see, men have not really met real men. They've met placebos. They've met people with men things. You need a real man to look you in the face and say you're bigger than that and you're better than that. You can't let people break your spirit anymore. Because you're the seed of the next generation. Don't copy what's famous. Develop what's good for you. Don't copy what all these rappers and people are doing and you try. Find who you are. And see how many people are like, I want to be like someone. So I remember the great Shaquille O'Neal talking about he wanted to be a rapper. And he talking like this all the time. How are you going to be able to Who going to understand what you're saying? But he's a great businessman. See, what they are, you may not be. And I don't want to be like anything that can't send me a check. You're out here buying their shoes. Looking like them, how much money did they send you? Hmm? Fear is an infection from the past. See, the problem is you never dealt with your past and accepted your failure. You're embarrassed. Why be embarrassed when you have a chance to get it right? Why? You hang it over your head, they hang it over your head, and you feel bad, and they go on about their business. And what they're doing is they're killing space for you and creating space for them. They're killing your space. I watched a movie, and I don't watch movies unless it's a documentary. But I got stuck, and I had to watch a movie. And there was this lady who, I don't know, I, I think they call it the Apple Mortgage Cake. You can look it up. And she was about bad marriage. I don't know if she was married. I, I just saw bits of it. And long story short, she had three boys. She had a friend that was really a friend, but she didn't trust nobody. And she was $4,000 behind on her mortgage. So the house was getting ready to go into foreclosure. She had inherited, but because of sickness and things like that, she had to go get loans on it and da-da-da. And so she didn't know what she was going to do. And people don't listen to me because I'm not trying to do me. I'm trying to help you because I'm going to do me when it comes to business. My gift is a thinker. And so her son said to her, and she got very upset. And they said, well, Mom... Why don't you sell grandmama's apple pie? She jumps up from the table and says, you want me to sell a pie and I need $4,000. And one of her sons said, Ma, you can sell that apple mortgage pie or, or, or cake, whichever one it was, for $40. And if you sell $100, you have the mortgage. She had no faith in herself. A friend came by, uh, and the father, I, 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 I watched it when the father was, the biological father was sitting out there watching everybody talk to her because she was helping nonprofits and doing things. It's a true story. Oprah found it, and boom, I think it came out in 2014. And long story short, she had no faith, but she had all the ability to do it. And it wasn't until the people who believed in her walked out of her life because she wouldn't believe in herself. And let me tell you what y'all do. And I'm saying you, I'm saying those of you on the broadcast as well. When the man left and said, you don't believe in yourself, she prayed in the kitchen and Lord help me. Many times you're praying about something and the resources are already there. You are too afraid to discover them. 
Now I'm talking to the person today who wants to get it. You're too afraid to discover. The resources are already there. You're already connected to somebody, but you don't believe in your gift. So when she woke up, her friend who she had helped and encouraged had just got a job. But somehow she talked to or knew somebody and they told the CEO. So the lady said, I just got a job. You helped me because you encouraged me, even when you didn't see light for yourself. And she didn't see light for herself. All she saw was a tunnel. And so the CEO got on the phone, and this is what he said to her. And she was worried about because she got an order from Canada, and she was like, how am I going to ship a cake? She had all the negativity in the world. That's how I see some of y'all. You focus on what's broken and not what's fixed. And because of pride and past failure, you won't ask somebody. And so the man talked to her, and long story short, he said, you've got one cake. I need you to make five more. And what we're going to do is let you sample them, and if you approve them, we're going to manufacture them and ship them all over the world. So you, you look it up. See, and, and somebody came back and told me that had saw it. They said, you've been telling us your gift is in your hands. Your hand is connected to your mind. You don't have any faith in yourself, but you trust someone else to use you and manipulate you to give you pennies when God designed for you to get dollars. And now her case is still going on. You can order one from Amazon now. A cake that was made to pay the mortgage. Now has set up generational wealth. This is the month I call grace because this month I'm exiting some things and people out. Because your gift many times don't fit your environment. Oh, I wish I could help you. Your gift don't fit because they don't talk the language that you need to hear. And some of them are very influential people. And you're like, man, I'm glad to be at the table with them. You, they're at the table, but they don't have no vision. And so if you're not willing to change your company, you will always be infected from your past. Fear divides the body, mind, and spirit. So it cannot function as one. Don't be trapped by the situation and the fear of other people. Don't get caught up in the, my granddaughter cute, my grandson cute, girls going to like him. I don't care about how they look. If they got my blood, I'm going to make sure they be successful. And not to impress you or anybody else. My grandkids and my future grandkids, if this old bald head stay warm, they won't have, they'll, they'll learn how to manage it. They won't have to dig for it. That's my job. I'm serious. Your nieces and nephews? See, when fear and people can divide you from who you are, everybody got crazy people in their family. Quit looking at the crazy people. And sometimes the one in the mirror crazy. <laughs> and you focus on what can't grow rather than what can grow. I feel the preacher, but I ain't got that time. Yeah, I ain't got that time. See, people want to continue to bring up your past because it hides their failure. You have to understand I've been bruised, but I'm not broken. I have been disappointed, but I refuse to give up. I have been left out, but long as God got the key, I'm getting in. Hmm? This is how you have to think. Where you are is not your final destiny. You worried about who like you, you need to worry about who can pull you forward. And I'm going to close with this. Just remember when people criticize you and you all are going to make mistakes. 
because there is no perfect people. All right? And the people that look like they're perfect are some of the biggest liars you've ever seen in your life. Ain't nothing no worse than a liar. I see why God said a liar not going to tear in this cycle. See, that will be there all day. Here's what I want you to realize. When people want to bring up who you were, oh, you know, you, you divorced. You know, you do. Ain't nobody perfect. You tell them going forward, God dropped the charges. I'm not in your court. My charges have been dropped in heaven. Yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I messed up. And if I keep living, doggone it, I'm going to do it again. Because I will tell people forgiveness is in the Bible for more than a sinner. Because the Bible says if your brother be overtaken in the fault, and sometimes people will push you to a limit, that you have to handle them in the physical and then ask for forgiveness in the spiritual. I ain't never going to be that believe that much that I don't need to repent. But if you repent, you won't do it no more. It depends on if you don't do it no more. <laughs> Can I help you? If somebody find it, I think it's 440 times in the Bible that I think Peter went. Now, now Peter was a liar and a curser. And a fighter. How he going to ask Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Like he must have forgot what he had done. You see what I'm saying? See, people forget what they've done, but when other people come and they need your forgiveness or they ask you for forgiveness, then he will, how many times, look it up, how many times should I forgive my brother? And the Lord says 70 times 70, which I think eventually when it comes out, and he said a day. Four hundred and eighty-nine. Tell him, tell him at four hundred and ninety, it's on me now. It's on me. <laughs> I'm going to give you 489, but 490 is going to be a different story. <laughs> so if they can be forgiven, why can't you? Release yourself of that burden or always trying to justify something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible talks about God has taken your sins and cast them in the sea of forgiveness. The only person can hold that over your head is you. This month, I want you to free yourself of other people's opinion. And I want you to pray and ask God to give you vision for your future. I ain't worried about no job. Job comes and goes. I want to work on my future. Because 99% of you who are watching and present, your job is not working on your future. They, and let me tell you when they work on your future is they advance you. You getting a paycheck once a week, once a month, or twice, or twice a month. They paying you for what you've done. You need to get paid for what you're going to do. You need to quit working for a check and make your own check. Now work for it till you build yours. Now don't quit your job. Don't be a to He told me I need to work for us. Mm -mm. You got to build this thing up, baby. Don't be out there talking about, oh, I'm going to take off on faith. I'm going to quit my job. Gee, that's on you. I'm going to have a disclaimer at the bottom. That's on you. Here is what I want you to know as I close. Victory is not measured in the moment you're going to have good moments and you're going to have bad moments victory is not measured in the moment but in the movement I want you to start moving and planning about moving your life forward just not your life but your body I said this today um, I was studying the sight word, sight word, and here's what it says. Are your coping mechanisms healthy? Whatever you do to cope, is it healthy? Some people, and, and, and I thought it was interesting because 
if your coping mechanisms are not healthy, then you won't be healthy. You can't always do what others do because sometimes they're at the top of their mountain when you're at the foot of yours. And my brothers and my sisters, you're going to need your body. You're going to need your knees, your back, your ankles. You're going to need your mind to be able to walk through with all the pride that God has given you. So I thought that was significant and I wanted to share it with you. Are your coping mechanism healthy? And I had some younger people today in, in class and they said, wow, I never thought about it like that. Sometimes you're doing what everybody else is doing and you're doing what you like, but what you like will not preserve your body long term. Does that make sense? So now I want to go back to this. Remember, victory is measured not in the moment, but in the movement. All right? Now, I want to close with this, and I want you all to say this with me. You're important to God and your future. You have a purpose. Don't let what you see be your final look. You're important. Your body's important. It's a temple. Your life is important. Your children are important. You're important. And, and stop letting people hang stuff over your head. And when they do, you tell them God dropped the charges. Did I help you this morning? Now y'all can go fire up your barbecue grills. Stop by and have your brunch and lunch. Smile. All right? Just don't fall in the grill, okay? Don't fall in the grill. Do some good barbecuing. God bless you. I'll see you soon.